Okay, hi guys. Um, in this talk, we are going to talk about how to remotely exploit and attack on seismological networks. So, a disclaimer before the talk is that all vulnerabilities have been reported to the US and Europe CERT to avoid any issue, legal problems. And this is very important that we are not responsible of any action that anyone here can take after attending this talk because we also we are providing the source code to exploit all the seismological networks. So we are, what we are talking about, um, the motivation and the background uh, behind this research, uh, basic introduction to seismological networks to understand better um, all the elements and topology of the network, the impact, and then we are going to the demo about the attack and penetration inside the network. Um, this research has been uh, done with Bertin Berbis, which is in the 8.8 .8 in Chile right now. Um, myself, which is, well, my name is James Jaram. We have been at the DEF COM, Black Hat, Echo Party, and several international conferences. We are from Costa Rica. I don't know if you know where it's located, but this is America. Central, this is Latin America. We are a small, small country. Yeah, it's not Puerto Rico because everybody thinks Costa Rica is Puerto Rico, but it's not. Okay, so which is the motivation behind this research? Um, well, an average attacker uh, is not interested because this is like a scientific topic. So also because it's a cool scenario, uh, this means that these devices are located maybe on the polar cap, hundreds of meters under the ocean. Um, so if you deny love service over at these devices, it will be pretty expensive to a company to make it uh, work again. Um, also, this could lead into a financial sabotage to a specific uh, companies or countries. So that's it. that is why um, the average attacker is not uh, interested. This is more so kind of govern government stuff or red teams. Um, this is an example of the seismic and volcanic activity over the world. So basically we have um, sensors over all the world. There are a lot. Basic seismologic terms. Um, which is the main purpose of the seismic network is uh, basically record the earthquakes, um, movements, and waves. Um, they want to find the location of the earthquakes. They want to measure the waves, um, calculate the magnitude. Also, they will be processing and storing all this data in different acquisition servers across the world. This is one are instruments that measure the wave of the earth. So the common applications are um, earthquake detection, freaking and dealer for oil and gas recovery, structural analysis of the earth, um, mine safety. This slide is very important because um, the sensors works also for oil and gas recovery. So there are companies that use the same sensors for earthquake detections in the research of oil and gas. This is how they look. They are really small. And we have the broadband sensor. We have a accelerometer and the geophone. Which are the vendors um, in this space? We have a lot of vendors, but uh, nanometrics is claims to be the number one in the industry, and then we have the Google system. Our research is on top of these uh, two vendors. The internal of each device, um, the internals they are on Linux based. They have a remote management system. They have several services like SSH, Telnet, and FTP. They have a um, web server, which is in Jetty. Um, they have an accurate GPS system, and they contain a battery for at least um, one year. So what is Taurus? 
Taurus is a portable digital seismograph because we have the sensor which connect to the Taurus and Taurus sends the data to the acquisition server. This is how it looks the air deployment, which is pretty simple. And the ocean bottom deployment, which is uh, complex. We are talking about uh, deployment of one month. Um, we have a Jeff Potter, which is the marketing leader of nanometrics, who claims um, the instruments malfunctions wherever it's in the bottom of the ocean or a top polar ice cap, the, that the data will last forever. So if they don't work for at least one second, they will lose the data forever. There is not another way to recover it. This is how it looks, the topology of uh, seismologic networks. We have, as I said before, the seismometers, which is a sensor and sends the data to the digital portable and this will be sending the data to the acquisition server. So in future, we will see how to execute a man in the middle attack also. There is an organization in charge of all related to this uh, seismological network, which is the International Federation of Digital Seismograph. They have uh, several books and reference manual will help us to understand how it works on the network. In especially the SEED manual, which is the most important because this is the protocol that they are using to exchange the data. So, um, talking about a little the impact on, on the real world, we discovered that these devices are located in any part of the world, but um, they have a lack of security in all sense. So, basically, all the different uh, points of failure are vulnerable. So I have a question here. Um, what if an um, earthquake were shaking the city of Madrid? Um, even being a hot, this will be have an impact of the economic of the country. So that is possible right now. Um, we have another example which is involved a lot of money. Uh, what if a company modifies uh, the sensors of other company, which is um, researching specifically and a space uh, we, which have uh, oil and gas, that is a possible environment also. And this one, which is uh, more critical, um, what if a data acquisition server contains fake data, corrupted data? So we are wondering if the predictions will fail. Because we have an um, example here, here about the scientists who get jailed because they did not predict correctly an earthquake. So what happens if the data on the acquisition servers get corrupted? Well, this could happen. So yeah, too much talk. Uh, basically, seismological networks are pretty big. So I have tried to give you an idea about the different elements. So we are going to attack and penetration of the system. Basically, how the process and footprinting, how we discovered these devices. So let's see. We are using NetDB IO, which is an IoT search engine. It is free, so anyone can try it. Um, this is different than Shodan, which has a Lucene syntax. We have a query builder syntax, which is pretty easy to use. We have several uh, operators, um, SSL operators, especially, and geolocation operators. But for this case, we will use headers which the key will be server and the value will be Taurus. So those are the results of this query. As we can see, um, they are located uh, near from here. 
So this is how we discover these devices. And we have uh, many fingerprints that we can get to see what, what contains. As you can see here, I don't know if it's visible. We have the Jetty, the Linux, and different uh, fingerprints. So, as you see, that is how we find the Taurus devices. But um, this is from the UI. We have a script which will be provided to anyone, which will be searching over Sumai, over Cholan, and over NetTV to get all the Taurus devices of the world. So, as I said, contains Jetty, contains Linux. We have the version to execute anything we want. Also, we get uh, the firmware, how we get it. Uh, we look in Google, but uh, it's not uh, available. So we send an email to Nanometrics and other vendors. Um, I don't know why, but they, they reply our email with the firmware. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. But we have the firmware, so we get a study over the firmware. Um, but uh, one week later, we get another email from Nanometrics, in this case, um, um, which says Nanometrics software can only be provided to registered customers. And I do not see the organization registering our customer database. But OK, we, we just ignore this email. OK, coming back to the seed manual, uh, the seed reference manual is very important because this is the only way we can uh, reproduce the package. Uh, which is, is the standard of exchange of earthquake data. So, seed protocol. How, how do it works the seed protocols? We have uh, four sectors. Uh, the first one, the network code, um, the station code, because we can have several devices in the same uh, sector, uh, location ID, and channel codes. Also, for Google system, it's pretty easy to find these devices using, again, NetDV, but looking inside the certific certificate SSL metadata. Um, and this is uh, not a common query, but it's uh, really good to search uh, data inside the certificates. For the case of Shodan, it's available, or also NetDV. So it's, it's pretty cool to search. Uh, rather than the looking of the headers, looking inside the certificates. So with which tools we use to start looking what services has each uh, each device? We have on the script which collects the IP worldwide. That is one, and we have another the scripts will be scanning uh, all the ports of each device. So let's see. So this is pretty simple. As you can see, we are looking over Shodan, and there are different scripts uh, over NetDV, um, Sungai, and others. So this will be create a file. Then we will use scan devices. And this will be just a map looking for each IP, and will return all the open ports of each uh, IP. So we can see here um, output of all IPs, which is a, are a lot of IPs. So all of these IPs are only tablet devices. And this is um, a friend of Costa Rica, which is helping us to look the end map devices. Uh, maybe you know who is. So basically, which are the common ports? Um, we are talking about the service of Telnet, SSH, and HTTP server. We have also a script to get an image about uh, how it looks all the, these devices. So we have a worldwide map containing all 
continues all, all the screenshots of the web application. And let me show you how it, how it looks. So this is how it looks at Taurus device. Yeah, it's that that is it's pretty simple. You have graphics about how, how what is happening, the waves, etc. Also, we execute um, fuzzing web technique over the Jerry server, and it crash. It crash always because these uh, devices doesn't contains too much memory. And which is Jetty server is a Java server, it's pretty easy to crash it. They have a lot of information disclosure and issues everywhere. This doesn't have any kind of security. Going back to the firmware analysis, uh, we start looking for the root password inside the files. Uh, we decode it. We have also discovery uh, backdoor. There is not an official user documented which is called factory. As you can see here in the image, we have central text and user. But factory is not documented in any place, uh, anywhere of the documentation of nanometrics. So everyone can use it. Also, when we get inside the system of any of these devices, shell shock and other kind of vulnerabilities are available. The idea is to take a malicious user perspective perfected to protect uh, your data, which is what we always uh, say to all the vendors. Because um, we can now execute a man in the middle attack. So let me show you. For this case, we have a video because uh, we cannot execute uh, this in real, because it could, be, could lead into any legal problem. So a friend sent me this video. Yeah. So we are um, going to the a streaming option. For this case, this could be um, by a script, but for a presentation purpose, we are doing from the front end. Each device has the, the exactly position in the world. So we are looking for. So as you can see, this uh, device is in the middle of the ocean. The video is slowly. Okay, so there you have. This is uh, near to here. And now we are going to the settings of the device, uh, especially to the configuration. So we are going to the data streaming options. We will start on UDP streaming. So as you know, which this is using UDP will be pretty easy to do IP spoofing also. We are going to add a new um, a streamer. We are setting our um, target IP. This is an uh, old server, destination server. So now we are in the destination server and we will start getting all the data.
So as you can see, we are getting all the package. This is an NP uh, format. And now we are uh, redirecting the data. Of course, we are not resending this data for the uh, data acquisition server because this will lead uh, into a very big issue, right? So as you can see, all the packets are text plain. There is nothing using SSL communication or anything like that. They are, they are not authenticating the data also. So you can set up right now here a fake device and they start sending data to the acquisition server. So basically, the the protocol uh, works like this is not real. This is just a visual properties, but they are sending lati latitude, longitude. Um, altitude, so we can modify all this data pretty simple. We can use um, a spoofy, for example. So uh, at the end, we have uh, the script which will connect to each IP and will execute any command. This could be doing in a massive exploiting uh, way. So for this, we recommend to uh, disable your SSH host uh, key shaking feature. And then you will need to have an IP, a text file with all the IPs, and execute parallel SSH towers. So, for example, we can execute all these um, examples for Shellshock, you name to see which uh, uh, server is. Uh, we can even open a reverse SSH or even use a framework to uh, do anything inside. So. So for example, um, as you can see here, the script, um, you need the parameter with the text, uh, the, the IPs, and the command. So we will execute your name. So there is all any commands possible. I am executing this over one single IP because I don't want to make anything to the network. Well, something some sometimes fails. That is the karma, because I I know why. Well, that is another example. We can execute any kind of command to the old network with with within a single command. And the code is pretty simple. It's, we are using parallel SSA clients. So um, I will release all this source code, but I am not releasing the password. So if you want, get the firmware, extract the password, and that's it. As you can see in this line, we are reading the password from other file to avoid any kind of leaking this information because this is pretty sensitive. So at the end, we execute a clean, a clean command over all the network just to, you know, avoid any problems. So conclusions, um, we were able to locate this device anywhere in the world. Um, also, we are in control of the device 
the small mirror and the data acquisition server basically anything uh, all the infrastructure there is not ssl communications over the data um, finally vendors please um, code better and think in security and that's it thanks a lot that's the presentation There's 15 minutes left, so any questions? Yes, thank you. It seems the web interface is not authenticated, or did you use the backdoor user for the web UDP adding the streamer? For the case of, uh, in this case, it's not yeah. authenticated, but, uh, well, in this case, it is. Or look, okay, ah, it's okay. not. But uh, as you can see in the in the image that we have in the slides, they are um, showing all the template users, so we can use any, any of them. For example, we have central, and this is open, so central is the password. So that's it, and you can log in. So you can see we are inside right now. We're going successful. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Any other questions? Uh, do you know if these devices have been used in recent DDoS attacks against uh, OVH? Well, that is a common question, but um, we can do a DDoS, uh, but they are not good strong for this task yeah because uh, in fact you can uh, set the target ip for uh, the streaming and if you control uh, a fair number of these devices and point to the same target they will receive a huge amount of bandwidth and uh, the ddos against ovh was uh, probably this kind of attack yeah well uh the thing is that these devices are not too strong to create a DDoS attack, so I don't think that will work. They are like, uh, they don't have enough memory. You can do a DDoS over a single device and he will die as soon as possible. So. I have a question actually. Could a determined attacker break all of these devices remotely at scale? If they can uh, break all uh, devices at the same time, yes, of course, with this script they can do it. For example, if all these devices are in the ocean bottom and you create a script and you disconnect the interface, that's it. Everything will be disconnected. And that means a lot of money. A lot of money. All right, if no further questions, let's say thank you to James. Thank you.